Today on Monkey Life. Hold him here. Major problems for the team when Hunchback Tao is on the operating table. For Mike right now, it's a real nightmare to operate in a good position and keep his airflow good. Mother-to-be Shaolan shows off her blooming figure. She's got a nice big round bump, so you can tell, especially when she stands upright or if she's swinging, you can really see it. And Waska's woolly monkeys get a new house. Monkey World, buried deep in the English countryside, is the largest sanctuary of its kind on the planet. For 25 years, the team have been rescuing and rehabilitating abused and unwanted primates from all over the world. We've really done everything we can to make her journey as smooth as possible. The park is run by Dr. Alison Cronin and is home to more than 240 monkeys and apes. The aim is to give them as natural a life as possible. There are 84 capuchins at Monkey World. Until now, most of the males and females have lived separately. But recently, there have been some problems in the boys' group. So primate care staff have decided to move four of them in with the girls. Sean was a dominant male, but recently, Winslow has been challenging him. Bruce is constantly over-groomed by the other boys, which has led to him developing some wounds. Caesar came from the British pet trade and is a bit of a loner. He's never really fitted into the group. And then there's new arrival Tao, who was rescued from Slovenia. Having been kept as a pet, he doesn't really understand the hierarchy in the group and has ended up in quite a few scuffles. Tao's a very confident individual in a lot of ways, but um, he also he doesn't have the social skills sometimes to deal with it um, and he'll sit there and try and take it. So um, our main worry was when we actually got the entire group together that he was, he was going to have a really hard time defending himself. Life should be calmer for these boys from now on. Our females generally are a little bit more relaxed and chilled um, than all the boys in this house. So we're hoping, yeah, it's going to be a little bit easier life for them and also being the only boys in amongst those females, they're, they're probably going to get a lot of attention. But before they can move, Tao, Bruce and Sean need to undergo a rather delicate procedure. Three of the boys are getting vasectomised. Um, we've got 84 capuchins, so um, we're not really wanting to breed with them at this point, um, mainly because there are other capuchins that may be in need of rescue, so we don't want to use up any more space. At the hospital, the park's vet, Mike Nathan, is making preparations. The unknown factor for us this morning is not so much Sean and Bruce, who've both been anaesthetised before, but Tao, who hasn't been. I mean, hopefully there won't be a problem, but we'll see. Bruce and Sean are first on the table. They were both rescued from a laboratory in Chile, along with most of the capuchins at the park, where they were being used for reproductive research. Their vasectomies are fairly straightforward and don't cause Mike any problems. We give him his wake-up drugs and he goes down to his new home. Yeah, we're just heading to the lodge for Kyle. Oh, good boy. Like that. Tao has been left till last because he's also going to have a health check while he's at the hospital. Normally, they would have examined him earlier, but he was underweight and frail when he arrived from Slovenia, and an anaesthetic at that point would have been too risky. Even now, Alison is worried. A little bit of a nerve-wracking time. He is very skinny, he has had rickets. We don't know a whole lot about his medical history, so you just don't know how he'll react under anaesthetic. Tao has a deformed spine because of the rickets, which has given him a hunched back. This immediately causes problems for Mike. Uh, right, get the, that's going to be the fun, isn't it? I, yeah. knew, I knew that would be my problem. Just having problems with positioning him. Yeah, hold, hold him here. 
Oh, no, I've got sandbags I can use. Just hold him in position. For Mike right now, it's a real nightmare ensuring that Tao has a good anesthetic for the procedure because of his body shape. He's a hunchback, effectively, permanent. And in order to get him to sit still and stable, we have to pile up sandbags behind his head to keep his natural curvature in order to operate in a good position and keep his airflow good. Mike is up against time. If he doesn't manage to stabilize Tao in a good position soon, the procedure will have to be abandoned. At Gordon's Oaring enclosure, the team are keeping a close eye on Xiao Lan, who's due to give birth in the next few months. We're really pleased with how Xiao Lan's been going through her pregnancy. She's really active, she's eating the same, she's not grumpy. Um, and in the past, other orangutans have been grumpy during their pregnancy, so we think she's having quite an easy ride compared to maybe to, to them. Physically, she's got a nice big round bump, so you can tell, especially when she stands upright or if she's swinging, you can really see it. Maybe a little bit more breast than she had before, but other than that, she's just Xiao Lan. There's still confusion over who the father is. Although Xiao Lan is living in Gordon's group now, she recently spent a few weeks in Tuan's group. Their gestation is very varied in the number of days. It ranges from 236 to 276. And obviously she moved groups, so she's been with Gordon and with Tuan. And there was some sexual interest with Gordon, and then there was positive matings um, a, a couple of months later with Tuan. So it all depends on whether she starts showing signs of she's going to give birth early, it could possibly still be Gordon's, we're, we're not sure. Orangutans are native to the islands of Borneo and Sumatra in Southeast Asia and are critically endangered. It's thought there are only around 50,000 Bornean orangs and 7,000 Sumatran orangs left in the wild. Female orangutans usually only give birth around once every eight years, so pregnancies like Shaolan's are very important. Hey, mother-to-be, I'm here. Let's have your extra. The Orang team are giving her additional food to make sure that both she and her baby get enough nutrients. Salam, Pam. Let me see your Pam. Okay, let me see your Pam. Higher, higher. They're also checking her regularly to make sure there are no obvious problems. This will be Shaolan's first child. Ideally, the team would like her to have the baby indoors, but they're prepared for every eventuality. Good girl. In the past here at Monkey World, we've had a few births at night, but also two in the middle of the day in the middle of the outside enclosure. So I couldn't tell you exactly what Shaolan's planning, um, but I'm hoping that she does give birth uh, in the bedrooms, just because it's, it's better for her, it's warmer, um, and we, we've obviously got a much clearer view on her of what's going on in case we need to help her out. It's always exciting when we've got a baby on the way, particularly when it's an orangutan. So obviously the orangutan team, well, everyone at Monkey World is really excited about this. At the hospital, Mike has finally managed to stabilise Tao. Right, OK. He's having to have a vasectomy before he moves in with the girls, because the park already has 84 capuchins and doesn't want to breed any more. The difficult part of a vasectomy is locating the tube that needs to be snipped, because it's very small and is mixed in with a bundle of nerves, arteries and veins. Right. Mike will send a small piece of the section he snipped to a lab to confirm he's cut the correct bit. As part of Tao's health check, he's having bloods taken to make sure he has no underlying health problems the team are not aware of. Mike also wants to take some x-rays, but with Tao's hunched back, once again, that's not going to be easy. Whoa, don't you wake up on me. Oh. He decides it's safer for Tao to have an x-ray on his side. I'm not risking that, I'm sorry. I'm just going to do a lateral to get that out of the way. Sorry. See, he's going to get yeah, yeah, I'm not he's quite happy on I'm his I'm not side. prepared to uh, try risking that. Can I have the lights off, please, behind you, Hanson? 
the x-rays will show the team the extent of the curvature of Tao's back. That's fine. OK, x-ray. His rickets was the result of a lack of vitamin D3, caused by not having enough sunlight or an appropriate diet. Effectively, his whole spinal column, the whole area there, looks completely fused. You can't do anything with that. It's formed. He's not in pain with it, but he's totally compromised. So he's never going to be... He's ne I don't think he'll ever be one of the ones you can see leaping from branch to branch. He tries to take off like that, I suspect he'll flop. It'll take Tao a little while to recover from the anaesthetic, but when he wakes, he'll be in his new home with the girls. Went well, I think, um, but we're just going to give him a little while because he is being a bit slow to come around and obviously we're worried in terms of his mobility if he starts trying to climb, you know, before he's fully awake. So just going to maybe monitor him for the next half an hour and then see how he goes. Chimp Sammy, who lives in The Bachelors, has developed a weight issue. The last time he was on the scales, he was 77 kilos, which is a lot for a chimp. But primate care staff now think he's even heavier. They're concerned because he has an underlying health issue. He has an enlarged throat sac, which can exacerbate chest infections. So they've asked wildlife vet John Lewis to take a look at him. Yeah, well, I'll tell you one thing, he's got fat all over his back. He has put weight on. Uh, there's a number of reasons for putting weight on, including being greedy or having access to too much food or there are medical conditions which will cause that. But he has put weight on, that's not going to help him. So at least he's a very cooperative patient. <laughs> John has advised the primate care staff to try to cut down the amount of food Sammy eats. But that's not as easy as you might think. <laughs> Feeding time at The Bachelors is always a rowdy affair. The chimps are given a variety of fruit and vegetables throughout the day, and the higher rankers, such as Buckton and Jester, get the pick of the crop, meaning they put on more weight. Low rankers like Charlie and Gypsy get the leftovers. Sammy isn't at the top of the pecking order, but when it comes to food, he's very clever. Sammy does tend to um, hoard his food, so he'll look around, he'll pick a couple of pieces out, and then he'll put one in his mouth and he'll add to his stash. So he's constantly looking and he's constantly filling his face, so he has an effective feeding strategy. Being a big chimp, no one challenges Sammy when he's eating. He loves his food, but I guess you could say he's a little greedy, yeah. Because the chimps live in a group, whatever the team decide to do for Sammy will affect the others. But Kate has a cunning plan. She's going to try feeding them one type of food at a time. This, for example, I'm feeding turnip. Um, so I'm just feeding a whole feed just of one item. So that means that all of the animals have a chance of having exactly the same item. Inevitably, the, the lower ranking animals within the hierarchy would get slightly less of that. Um, but hopefully at least it's the same quality um, and Sam will hopefully get a bit less. So the amount of food the group get will stay the same, but the food will be distributed more fairly. Everyone will get some of the tastier items. Sammy is nowhere to be seen at first. Jimmy and Mojo quickly get their fill. As does leader Butch. But once Sammy does make an appearance, there's no stopping him. We're more concerned about Sammy's weight compared with some of the higher ranking animals like Buxom, Butch, Jester, because um, it does seem to affect his, his health and his activity levels. If we could get a little tiny bit more weight off him, I think he'd find moving around, playing with the chimps um, a little bit easier and more comfortable for him. He wouldn't be so puffed out. Low rankers like Rocky seem to be benefiting from the new feeding regime. For once, they've managed to get their hands on some of the tastier morsels. Although Sammy is still hoovering up. 
With everything that we've put in place, the changes to the food items we're feeding them, to the, the distribution of it, to the way it's presented to the chimps, all of those factors are going to help us shave weight off Sammy, and I am confident that he is going to lose some. When Wasker arrived at the park last year from Basel Zoo in Switzerland, it was decided he would lead his own group of woolly monkeys. He was joined by Quapa, who came with him from Basel Zoo, Lena and Zingu. They were put in a temporary enclosure until a new house could be adapted for them. Work began in earnest a couple of months ago, and the final touches are now being made to the building. I'm hoping they're going to like the new house. Uh, we've certainly put a lot of work into it, but you know, they're, they're quite hard monkeys to please, so we'll see. The team are putting up extra ropes for the monkeys to swing from because there's recently been a new addition to the group. Milo is Lena's son, um, who was fathered by Oscar, and uh, he's five months old now, so starting to become a little bit more independent. So this uh, is going to help him a lot as he starts to explore this brand new enclosure. Woolly monkeys are prone to stress, so the team want to make the move as smooth as possible. But they need to get the monkeys into crates to carry them the short distance to their new home. Oscar's crate training has went fantastically well. He's, he's been brilliant, so um, we've got actually no worries about him going in a box. Um, he seems quite comfortable about that. Um, the three girls are a bit um, more um, worked up about it, um, just because obviously Lena's got the baby that she needs to worry about, and then the other two girls are feeding from her. So if she's worried, they're going to be worried as well. But uh, we'll just take that as it comes and see what happens. They decide to move Wasker first because he's likely to get stressed if he sees his females being taken away from him. As soon as he arrives, he marks his ground. His normal uh, behaviour would be to go around, throw his weight around and make sure everyone knew that he was in his territory and that, you know, no other woolly monkeys um, should be around this area because it's his. Woolly monkeys are critically endangered in the wild, but the park has been very successful in breeding them. Enticing Lena and baby Milo into their crate is not simple. Hey, Lena, you come. The main obstacle with moving the girls is the fact that they get so highly strung, um, so getting them in the box is going to be the, the, big, the big obstacle. Lena. We have to be very careful. Their blood pressure can be quite a problem for them, so we have to keep everything quite strict and quite simple in our daily routines and that just helps them to make sure that the, the blood pressure doesn't get raised. Finally, they're on board. As Lena and Milo start to explore, the team head back to pick up the last two woolies. Oscar was just really happy to see everyone. Um, so I think when, when Quapa finally arrived and he knew that was his group complete again, I think after that it was just a case of business as usual and they've just gotten on with the rest of their morning now just such a relief to get it all over with. Everyone's where they're supposed to be and now we can just get on with it and just make sure the woolly monkeys are as happy as they possibly can be. The female capuchins at the park are in for a big surprise. They're about to be joined by the boys who fully recovered from their vasectomies and are now ready to move in. Sean and Caesar will be living with Amy's group, while Tao and Bruce will become members of Fifi's gang. Inside the house, Tao is soaking up his new surroundings. Sean is taking it all in his stride. As is Caesar. Bruce seems keen to make some new friends. Four boys are doing really well. They're now quite alert and sort of looking at their surroundings, um, flirting with the females. So, yeah, so far we're, we're pretty happy. The introductions, as always, are being carried out in the bedrooms because they are smaller, more controllable areas. Tao and Bruce are meeting Scarlet and Phoenix first. 
The Capuchin team have chosen them because they're low rankers, so we'll hopefully make them feel welcome. The boys seem rather bemused and not quite sure how they're supposed to behave around the girls. There's obviously an awful lot going on in the bedrooms at the moment, and the girls are actually quite wary of the boys, but, you know, I think probably avoidance at this stage is, is a good thing, you know, as Jeremy always says, too much too soon can sometimes turn, so... Yeah, they're just sort of checking each other out from a distance and, and moving around the space. We haven't had any actual contact yet, um, but certainly no aggression, so just sticking with it, really. The other boys are being eased gently into their group, too. And Sean seems to hit it off with Debbie, who immediately starts flirting. You can have animals that seem to get on very well at one moment and then the next minute they're not getting on so well. So it really can change like that because you've got lots of personalities in the mix um, and then they're going the females that they've never met. So lots of dynamics, lots of personalities and lots of things to watch out for. Um, but yeah, hopefully we'll get them in the end. Next time on Monkey Life. Cutting the apron strings, Kai leaves his mum and heads to the Orang nursery. All right, little man. And a fond farewell to the park's oldest marmoset. I would have never expected that we would be able to give Betty Boo the quality of life that we did for so many years. <laughs>